Welcome to What Healthy Couples Know That You Don't, a podcast dedicated to helping you create the relationship you truly want. In pursuit of wellness, finding your best therapist match, episode 117. I want to begin with a shout out to all my listeners in Canada. Thanks so much for listening. You're a good percentage of my audience, and I really appreciate you being here. This is Keeping It Real with Rhoda. Finding a therapist is certainly not easy. You don't want a therapist that is just calling it in. Last fall, I tried a stretching session, and the first trainer was really not paying attention, didn't even know it was my first time, and I did not return to her. Trust your gut if it just doesn't feel right. Therapy is too important to settle. I was inspired to write this by answering a phone call about someone new wanting an appointment. After explaining at 71, I'm not taking new customers, I said, I don't want this phone call to be a waste, so here are three pieces of advice. One, look at descriptions on psychology today. They should say whether or not they're taking new patients. Then two, check out reviews on healthgrades.com. And three, don't say stay with a therapist who just gives you support. Therapy is a process that has to be honest. It is both an art and a science in my mind. Therapy requires that you be uncomfortable. The therapy moments seared into my mind where I grew up the most. I was indeed very uncomfortable. It is impossible to grow if both of your feet are in comfort and support. You need to straddle the line between support, safety, being challenged, and uncomfortable. You can't grow without being uncomfortable. It's so important. I'm going to say it again. You can't grow without being uncomfortable. Therapy is a process of facing our illusions, understanding our escape hatches from the pain and difficulty of what life throws at us. While I'm not a crazy Steeler fan, I may even do bookkeeping while watching a game, but living in Pittsburgh, I have learned to appreciate football. My son sent me a video about the honorable tradition of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ben, our ex-quarterback begins by admitting that the tradition of honorable Steelers might be over was spliced in with Troy Palomalu and Jack Lambert with disrespect by current players. I watched and did not understand it and felt mad at Ben. I texted my son who explained the point of the video is that maybe Ben is right. The potential reality that I did not want to face actually made me cry. And then I forgave George Pickens. He's only 22 years old, for goodness sakes. Change is really hard work and facing hard truths. Owning your own dark dark side is no picnic. It can be painful to honestly look at yourself. A good therapist needs to create that moment where you recognize your own dark side instead of making excuses for yourself. Simply receiving reassurance and validation is just not good enough. You need to understand how you participate in your own bad choices. With a good therapist, you open your eyes and learn to recognize the harsh truth of how you've been a willing accomplice in your own terrible relationships. This is what leads to the internal wince of shame and the resolve to do it differently going forward. Chris Rock, in his recent Netflix comedy hour, called out victimhood, saying there are too many victims in the world right now. We have to distinguish feeling defensive and sorry for ourselves with true trauma and tragedy. 
It's important to grow enough to carry our trauma within. Instead of our trauma burying us in our fears and impossibilities, no one should be in therapy only for validation. The true challenge is to embrace the really hard work of change. It's important to be able to trust your therapist when they say things that are hard to hear about yourself. Maybe it's something about being like your mother when you swore you never would be. Maybe you are filled up with self-righteous blame and you are interrupted by a moment of facing your own part in the problem instead of dwelling in that comforting attitude of blame. Maybe it's being interrupted with a new way to think about a problem with your teen by asking her how you could be a better parent rather than the sneaky pleasure of enjoying an opportunity to complain about them. A story about trust, about someone in brand new recovery, which is a fragile time, saw a therapist that he had shared things with that he had never told anybody. And that's really what you want. You, you want to be with somebody that you feel that you can tell them things you haven't shared with anybody. Unfortunately, the trust he demonstrated was not reciprocated by the therapist until later. She announced at the very end of the session he was too extreme and would have to find somebody else. He had no opportunity for greater understanding or even a referral. Giving credit to them both, he returned for one last session and the therapist apologized. A therapist apologizing is an excellent sign. He gave me permission, of course, to share this true story that happened not that long ago. I read The Running, Gra Running Grave by Robert Galbraith, who is actually J.K. Rowling, and I'm going to read you an insightful paragraph from page 763. Wow, said Robin, you must be a really good therapist. What, said Prudence, disconcerted? To be that honest, said Robin, I've had therapy. To be totally honest, I only liked one of them. Sometimes there's a smugness. This was shared because Prudence had admitted she messed up and had to tell her client. I've always called the smugness therapist as goddess. The authenticity of admitting dropping the ball matters. Episode 114 was an interview with a world business leader on trust and one of my personal favorites in almost nine years of podcasting. He said the first building block of trust was, does the other person have your best interests at heart, which is something to consider when it comes to trust. Another true story. A young man came to the house to do a small job, and he asked me what I did. After I explained, he said, my girlfriend broke up with me, and I've gone to a few sessions, and I can tell you're really different from her. I shared some specific observations that explained he might want to look at being a people pleaser and suggested a book to read. He smiled and said, I think she is giving me cookie cutter answers. Don't settle for that. You want a therapist you can spill your guts to. You want a therapist who will make you consider things in a fresh, new way way. You want a therapist you can disagree with and tell them when you feel they didn't get you quite right. You contribute to course corrections. You want a therapist who cares and is invested in your progress. You want a therapist who cares about the job that they do 
and they're willing to do themselves out of a job because they want you to be successful. You want a therapist who has a theory of change. You want a therapist who has a website with some free information, not just saying how great they are or selling stuff. You want a therapist you are not going to coast with. You want a therapist who respects you and that you respect. Reality is taking into account both the good and the bad of who we are. I believe that we are all a mixture of good and bad. Therapy is to help you have a greater range of choices as to who you are by recognizing and owning both those sides, the good and the bad, the yin and the ya. Everyone has anxiety in some measure. So let's use that recognizing how lopsided you are in your fears because you have anxiety. So therapy is all about helping you use the atrophied muscle of the opposite polarity of fear, which might be courage or might be calm and peaceful. You Consider small steps to stretch your unused muscles of courage or peacefulness. The more choices you experiment with, think of fear at number one, and you explore the two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine continuum with courage at number 10. The more you will be whole with a greater range of choices, the more you own both sides of yourself, the one and the 10 of both fear and courage and everything in between. That makes you more whole. It is choicefulness that makes you mentally healthy. There's not one right answer. And that helps you to live a more full life. It is choicefulness that helps you respond instead of reacting, like passengers fighting on a plane or the woman who threw a bowl of food at a fast food worker because she was unhappy. Therapy used to be a calling. And I hope that it still is for most of us. Social workers make the least. I am deeply a social worker. I believe social workers bring more of their heart to the work. And social workers can also be too sympathy only oriented. Every profession and professional has both their strengths and weaknesses. One of my most memorable sessions was late at night. The woman who called sounded terrible in the phone call. She was suicidal and, like many victims of trauma, very hypervigilant. She was grilling me, and I was so impressed that she wasn't just going to settle for trusting someone without putting them, me in this case, to the test. You have the right to check people out, to see if they are genuinely interested in working with you. The theory of change that I trained in respects resistance and symptoms have a way that they work for an individual. It's not possible to change without honoring that weird comfort we may get out of whatever unhealthy thing it is that we are doing. Just one example, you never invite anyone over and only wait to be invited, which is the comfort of avoiding rejection. When you ask people, they can say no. Who wants to deal with being rejected? So sucking your fingers uh, as a baby is another example. And that has a weird comfort to it. So 
Whenever you're doing something that's a little bit kooky, understand and respect it because it's giving you a comfort. And that's something you have to take some ownership of. When I used to introduce myself to new people in a first session, I would tell them how important honesty is. And my evidence of that is that I want to share that while my strength is to be challenging, that at times I can be too direct or on an occasion abrupt. I don't intend to do that, but it can happen. I would go on to invite them to give me honest feedback when a session wasn't working for them. That's the kind of relationship you want. You want to practice that deeper level of authenticity that takes some courage to speak up and say, you know, I really wasn't comfortable with whatever it is, ABC, that happened. Digest and chew over your therapy sessions. Don't just swallow them whole. Ask for homework to help you learn more outside of the session. Journal in your car after the session for 15 minutes so you don't forget important moments that require more thought. I used to hand out index cards when I saw my clients in person. I would draw pictures, capture important points that I believe needed more attention. Clients would keep them and review them. I did it to expand our time together beyond the 45-minute curfew that insurance companies set. So you might want to make your own index cards and write down points that you need to digest and think about later. I hope that today I've given you an awful lot to think about. Trust yourself. If it just doesn't seem like the right fit, you have a lot of hard work ahead of you. And change is not easy. So find the right person to do that journey of facing hard truths with. I don't make a dime because I believe in tikkun olam. Though I am not Jewish, I've borrowed it from my husband's culture. It is Hebrew for repairing the world, being committed to making the world a better place. I hope this podcast achieves the thoughtfulness required to improve all of your relationships. Thanks for listening and tell your friends to spread the word. Thank you for listening to What Healthy Couples Know That You Don't. If you have enjoyed the show, please leave a rating and review on iTunes and help get the word out. To learn more or connect with Rhoda, visit therapyideas.net.